Hello there, I'm Louise Brady and welcome to Top 10 Bikes 2003. We've brought together a group of biking experts who through their voting would allow you to gain an insight into the best bikes of 2003. This week we're looking at cruisers. Now here is the coveted award that is presented to the manufacturer of this week's number one machine. The question is, which bike will it be? Here we are at the start of another fun-filled countdown, so let's take a look at the bike in 10th position. Watch out, the Indians are coming. Well, that's the Indian Dakota 4. This huge bike takes 10th position in our top 10 cruisers. The Dakota is the ultimate in power cruisers. Picking one of these babies up means ordering your own made-to-measure bike and will cost you over 20 grand, so you better start saving now. The engine is based on a Volvo engine and is an inline four, so there's an interesting torque reaction to keep riding interesting. The Indian is comfy in an old-fashioned kind of way, nothing like a large single saddle and footboards for all-day comfort. For a big heavy bike, 325 kilos to be precise, it's pretty easy to manoeuvre. Feet up, U-turns, no problem. The engine is 1845 cc's and produces 74 brake horsepower for lazy cruising. The engine is clamped into the frame so vibration can be noticed, but not in an intrusive way. The Indian has a distinctive sound of its own, vintage days gone by. Now the brakes are a bit vintage too, a single disc on the front and a drum on the back. It makes stopping this big boy quite challenging. Indian Dakota 4. Yeah, what a funny thing that is. It's got a Swedish engine and it's built in Scotland and it's a dead American badge. But actually it does look pretty cool, I must say. I mean, as an ownership proposition, I, re I don't know, I couldn't say on that. I mean, there's so few of them and where you get one from and things. It's, uh, um, yeah, jury's out on that, I think, yeah. With Indian, it'll be interesting to see where they go with this because it's, it's a brand, it's, a, it's, it's something from the past that used to really, really mean something and used to compete with Harley head to head, so... Where, what it means in uh, 2003, I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see where it ends up. Well, it's a big bike and I think far too huge for UK roads. Even in the States, it's going to have problems matching up to the name Harley Davidson. And that's why it sits at number 10 in our cruiser chart. So our combined scores for each category of street cred, build quality, performance, comfort and value give the Indian Dakota 4 a total score of 64%, putting it firmly into 10th place in the chart. Kawasaki Amberlin at number 9 with the VN 1500 Mean Street. The Mean Street's engine is loosely based on the 1470 which is used in the Drifter. The Mean Streak is what you might call a performance cruiser. The fuel injection system boosts performance, as does the increased valve size and improved valve timing. You can rev the motor freely and enjoy its responsive nature. If you fancy an alternative to a sports bike, but with that laid-back cruiser styling, then the Mean Streak is worth a try. Its suspension is sportier than most cruisers and it has superb brakes. The six parts up front are taken straight from the ZRX12. Ground clearance is reasonable too, so this is a cruiser that you can have a bit of a thrash on. Well, Kawasaki VM1500 looks the part. In fact, looks very much like, um, again to a non-biker, your archetypal Harley Davidson. It goes well enough, good engine. Not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. The good thing about the Kawasaki cruisers is that they, you really get a lot of metal for your money. They're generally, you know, a good grand or so under the price of, of the, the competitive sort of Japanese cruisers in the market. And the Mean Streak is no exception. Uh, but so you're getting a ton of metal for your money, and more metal than the Humber Bridge for, you know, the price of a, a, a second-hand Fiesta, which, uh, you know, if you're a bike and you're into cruisers, you can't really sniff at. Well, I think there's very little mean about the VN 1500. It's overly large, it's trying to be American, and it's failed miserably. So our panel's tallied scores for each category gives the Kawasaki VN 1500 Mean Streak a total score of 68%, placing it ninth in our top 10 chart. Bowling us over at number eight is the BMW R1200C. If 007 rides one, then it's got to be good, right? Well, it's certainly different. The BMW is the sort of bike to sit back, 
relax and enjoy. It has classic, if somewhat different, good looks, but with all the mod cons you could desire. The infallible Boxer engine has limitless power and burbles away in a relaxed rhythm. The riding position is comfortable and, yes, you've guessed it, relaxed. In fact, this bike is so laid back it's almost unconscious. With the unique BMW Telelever front suspension and rear monolever swinging arm, the ride is going to be as smooth as Mr Bond himself. The R1200, like all good BMWs, is a shaft drive, so no nasty chain to oil on long journeys. This bike has been built to glide from horizon to horizon with the minimum of fuss. Yeah, it's, it's original. Um, it gets away from that generic cruiser look that uh, just goes everywhere and gets a bit dull. You can do stuff with it. You can go touring and all the rest. BMW dealers are good, but it's a bit of an acquired taste. The suspension's hard um, and it's a bit soft, the engine. But yeah, OK. The BMW 1200C, it's, it works OK, but it's just a bit of an oddball. It's some kind of weird German cruiser meets Harley kind of uh, nostalgia and it's just a bit of a slug. This is probably the coolest BMW to date. It's got style, it's got presence, and even with a slightly dodgy suspension, it bounces around those corners. I will say it's a bit pricey. So in eighth place in our chart, it's the BMW R1200C, with a total score of 70% from the combined scores of each category. Coasting into the number seven spot is our very own Triumph Bonneville America. Now, Triumph is one of the oldest names in motorcycling. The first Triumph was built in Coventry back in 1902. The Bonnie was the fireblade of its time back in the 50s and 60s. The air-cooled inline twin produces 65 bhp and a top speed of 110 miles an hour. The distinctive Triumph sounds as pleasing as ever and the torque is ample for a relaxed and effortless ride. The America has a different firing order, which gives the engine a lumpier feel, which suits low revs and cruising. Its offbeat sound is unique and it sounds great once it's worked its way through the slash cut exhaust. Fitted with wide forks, pulled back bars, feet forward riding position and the low seat, the Triumph Bonneville America is the perfection itself. Oh now the Triumph Bonneville America, curious thing. It looks the part, but then so does Jordan. doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be any good. It's comfortable. In fact, it's probably comfortable enough you're going to doze off on it. But that twin engine hasn't got a desperate amount of punch and it's not going to do your street credibility any good whatsoever. The Triumph Bonneville America, built for, specifically for the American market, it goes down an absolute storm over there. It's Triumph's biggest selling bike. Well, Triumph once again have listened to the cries of their customers and come up with a model which looks just like the old Bonnie. The Americans go mad for it and so should us Brits. So our panel's combined scores for each of those categories give the British Triumph Bonneville America a total score of 71%. That places it seventh in our top 10 cruiser chart. Roaring into the number six spot is Harley's baby cruiser, the 883 Roadster. The 883 is the smallest Harley on the market, and for around the five grand mark, you can own one. It's very much the entry-level hog, and if you're on the petite side, then it's the perfect Harley for you. It's the low seat height and size that's always made it popular with the ladies. The Sportster first came into existence back in 1957. The British bikes that were being imported to America were beating the Harleys, so not to be outdone, Harley went back to the drawing board. The outcome was the Evolution engine with overhead cams and a complete change for the Harley. The Sportster handles surprisingly well and cornering is a joy. The 883 engine has oodles of torque and pulls well from low down. Having it rigidly mounted to the frame means that you do feel everything that the engine is doing. Your feet and hands will be numb from the vibration. But with only a 12 and a half litre tank, you won't be on board for all that long anyway. I'm sorry, that is just a dreadful bike. You know, it vibrates, it doesn't handle, it's dreadfully slow. Um, and it's cheap, which is actually a bad thing because it gets people buying them and then they think, I don't want this anymore. I'll... Uh, if you sort of actually say to anybody in the street that you can actually buy a Harley Davidson for under five grand, they'd probably laugh at you, but you can with the 883 Sportster. 
Uh, yes, you're getting a, a, the very basic model in the Harley range, but still, for under five grand, I don't think you can really complain with the amount of metal you're getting. Well, I think it's a nicely priced entry-level hog, and with those 04 rubber engine mounts, it's just what this bike's been waiting for. So a quick tot-up of the combined scores for each category give the Harley 883 Roadster a total of 73%, putting it firmly in sixth place in our chart. Well, that's it for the first half of the show, but make sure you join us again in part two to find out which bike is crowned king of the cruisers. See you in a mo. Hello there, I'm Louise Brady and welcome back to Top 10 Bikes. In this week's show, we're looking at cruisers. But before we continue with our rundown, let's have a quick reminder of the chart so far. At number 10, it's the huge Indian Dakota. At 9, we find Kawasaki's not-so-mean VM1500 Mean Street. At number 8, it's the James Bond favourite, the BMW R1200C. At 7, it's Triumph's Bonneville America. Nearly there, but not quite. Number six marks the Harley Davidson's first entry with the 883 Roadster. So, in at number five, we've Honda's VTX 1800, a bike that's as much for looking at as it is for riding. Now, the VTX is a custom cruiser with its swept back bars and chrome everything. The engine is an immense 1795cc, pumping out 95 brake horsepower. But more impressively, torque is an astounding 115 foot per pound, which explains the way this bike rides. Power is available at any time, just crack open that throttle and you're off like a bullet. Those power pulses thumping through the frame and up through your body. You literally feel like this bike's heart is beating. Ultimately, this bike won't appeal to everyone, especially when you consider the price. But if you want a bike that will give you loads of fun at the same time as getting you noticed, then you should give this one a look. Although the VTX handles quite well and, and the engine's got oodles of torque, more than you'll ever need, you do end up finding that the, uh, the ground clearance, which on cruisers anyway is sort of marginal, is even more marginal. So you end up even parking it into a car parking spot in Asda and you, you end up scraping sort of 15 quid's worth of metal away. Uh, so it all ends up becoming about as cool as a backfiring Capri. It's disappointing in a lot of ways. The low speed handling is not very good. It drops into the corners um, and the power delivery is very sharp. And uh, you try and do a U-turn on that and, um, and you will end up underneath it. It's, uh, it's a bit scary. Um, but it works and it'll go, that will go on for years. That will go on for centuries, that bike. The Honda VTX 1800 is another, it's interesting that the, the Japanese have decided to build these so-called quasi-performance cruisers. Uh, and the Honda, obviously, it's well built, well put together, and it goes extremely well. I could sum up the Honda VTX 1800 with one word, really. Shame. This is Honda's further lunge into the heavyweight cruiser market, and this bike has enough power to uproot trees. The problem is it's still not far enough away from trying to be a Harley. So, totting up those scores for each category of street cred, build quality, performance, comfort and value give the VTX 1800 a total score of 74%, putting it firmly halfway in fifth place of our chart. In at four, our second Harley of the day, the Harley Davidson FXD Dyna Superglide. Harley Davidsons are synonymous with cruisers and the Dyna Superglide is a lot of people's first introduction to their range of big bikes. It features Harley's new twin cam engine with a 1449cc V-twin lump putting out a mere 67 brake horsepower. But it's not just the power that these bikes are all about. Looks are very 50s, those timeless classic lines will never go out of date but do make the bike look older than it really is. Of course you get all that kudos that comes with being a Harley rider and you'll never be short of friends no matter where you end up. Uh, one of the best Harleys I'd say certainly makes you stand out in the crowd a bit more than the standard Sportster. If you like that sort of thing it's fantastic. Great engine, runs out of puff very quickly but then that's not what cruising is really about. Well, it's a big bike and it should shell out big power, but this cruiser boasts torque figures and not BHP, which makes it not too much to handle for your first big cruiser. It's got a low seat height and it's a good looking machine. So our picky panels combined scores for each category give the Harley Dyna Superglide a total score of 76%. 
placing it fourth in our top 10 cruiser chart. In at number three is the Yamaha XV1700 Roadstar Warrior. Yamaha's Roadstar Warrior is another one of those bikes that was built for the American market. But after it was unveiled at the Munich show, the public demand was such that it was bought to the UK. The power comes from a huge 1670cc air-cooled V-twin engine, pumping out its huge power through a five-speed box. The final drive is a Harley-esque belt, which will allow this bike to provide hours of endless low-maintenance fun. The chassis is all aluminium, featuring 41mm upside-down forks, alloy wheels and twin discs at the front, which provide great stopping power with plenty of feel. Oh, the Warrior, I love that bike. I'm, I'm very, very impressed with it. It's, it's the first performance cruiser of, the, of that group, and, um, and it really is a performance cruiser. Some of them don't really do much except look like they ought to. This one does perform. Um, it's got R1 brakes and uh, the engine's good. Really nice bike. Yamaha too, with their, with their Warrior, have, uh, have, have built something slightly mad that, that is in, in cruiser form, but with a, with a massive uh, cubic capacity. Well, a lot better looking than the Honda and the Kawasaki offerings, this big Yam is a definite alternative to the Harley. And all that chrome, let's face it, it's going to please those born-again bikers no end. And looking at the total, the Yamaha Roadstar Warrior scored 79% by our panel of experts, putting it firmly in third place in our cruiser chart. Strolling in at number two, the bike with the wow factor, the Harley-Davidson V-Rod. The Harley V-Rod is a work of art. If Van Gogh had been a welder instead of a painter, the V-Rod would have been his sunflowers. It's metal sculptured into more than a motorcycle. It's touchable beauty. The V-Rod is the fastest hog on the road. This is due to the engine, which is a development of the VR1000 superbike engine. For years, Harley have been churning out new models that looked a lot like the old models. Not this time though. This is a whole new bike from the wheels up. As Harley put it, the V-Rod was born on the track and raised on the street, so it's one mean mother. The anodized aluminium bodywork is lighter and as sturdy as steel and unique to the bike world. Runs like a locomotive, looks like a dream. It's the only bike I've ever ridden which car drivers pull up next to you, wind the window down and ask you about it. It attracts attention like nothing else. Ride this through central London, it's going to get you lots of admiring glances, it's going to get you looked at. If Elvis still lives, um, and I've got some reports that he is actually working in a chip shop somewhere in Grimsby, he has got a Harley Davidson V-Rod outside. Absolutely stunning looking bike in titanium silver. The engine's derived from the VR1000 uh, racer bike from uh, a good few years ago. It didn't really make it the race bike, but uh, thankfully the, the engine found a home in the V-Rod. 115 brake horsepower. Uh, the brakes are, are, are better than your standard Harley fare as well. It goes around corners with a little bit of scraping, but uh, it's just got an amazing amount of street presence. Absolutely stunning bike, fantastic. Many Harley fans don't agree on this bike. Personally, I think it's a superb piece of craftsmanship, and given the choice, it's the only HD I'd have in my garage. So, adding up the scores for each category are street cred, build quality, performance, comfort and value give the Harley-Davidson V-Rod a total score of 82%, putting it firmly into second place in the chart. Before we reveal which cruiser the Men & Motors panel of experts voted number one, let's run down the chart so far. At number 10, the chunky Indian Dakota. Sitting at 9, Kawasaki's VN 1500 Mean Street. And at number 8, it's the BMW 1200C. In at 7, the rocker's favourite, the Triumph Bonneville America, with the baby of the bunch, the Harley Davidson 883, sitting at number 6. While at five, the curvaceous Honda VTX 1800. And another Harley Davidson at number four. It's the Dyna Superglide. At number three, the Regal Yamaha XV1700 Roadstar Warrior. And at number two, the arty Harley Davidson Vera. Well, I won't keep you guessing anymore. Let's reveal the number one cruiser of 2003. So the number one spot goes to the Honda Valkyrie F6C. The Valkyrie has the same engine as the Megatora Goldwing in its 1500cc capacity. 
Most people would think that a 1500cc flat six engine would be more at home in a car than in a bike. Well, they couldn't be more wrong. The silky smooth power delivery and lazy low down torque make it ideal for this type of bike. Not to mention it sounds fabulous and goes like stink. There is nothing else like this bike out there and the closest thing you will find is the early naked Goldwing, the GL1100. Not really a purist's cruiser, if you like. Lots of grunt, but probably not what I'd be looking at if I was looking for a cruiser. It's, it's not a Harley, so you've got to, got to kind of get over the lack of kudos that you get from the Honda badge. But that massive uh, flat six engine that you're getting from the, the Goldwing of old is just absolutely stupendous. Get a couple of slash cut megaphone exhausts on it and just go and have fun. Oh, the Valkyrie, yeah, that's, uh, that's, got, that's another bike with a great engine. I mean, it sounds like a Porsche 911 when you open it up. I mean, it's just really incongruous, and that makes me laugh. Uh, it's very big, um, very fast, and, uh, and it's made by Honda, so it works as well. Yeah, good bike. The Honda Valkyrie, again, is a really special bike. Six cylinders of complete and utter madness. Only Honda could build a bike like that and actually make it stick. So congratulations to Honda, this Valkyrie is an absolute hoot of a motorcycle and has a style all on its own. That enormous six cylinder engine is perfectly smooth and gives you so much power when you open that throttle it's ridiculous. It's just a shame Honda don't import it into the UK anymore. Right, I'd just like to thank Mena Motors for this award for the Valkyrie. This really vindicates the decision we made in Honda UK because we weren't sure whether to import the bike or not. But the crews are buying public and bought it in their droves and it's proved to be a success, so thank you very much. Well, the combined scores for each category gave the Honda Valkyrie a whopping total score of 85%. Well, there you have it. Thanks for joining me here on Top 10 Bikes. We'll catch you again next week with another sizzling Top 10 Bikes. See you then.